the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us now call to mind our sins. <clears throat> You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Then the seed for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, and the begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you, O Lord, and the Holy One, you are Lord of the Lord, you are Lord of the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, whose gift we venerate in one celebration, the merits of all the saints, bestow on us, we pray, that the prayers of so many intercessors and abundance of the reconciliation with you, for which we earnestly long. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw another angel come up from the east, holding the seal of the living God. He cried out in a loud voice to the four angels who were given power to damage the land and the sea. Do not damage the land or the sea or the trees until we put the seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. I heard the number of those who had been marked with the seal, 144,000 marked from every tribe of the Israelites. After this, I had a vision of a great multitude which no one could count from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm trees in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, Salvation comes from God, who is seated on the throne, and from the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They prostrated themselves before the throne, worshiped God and explained, Amen, blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor, power and might be to our God forever and ever, amen. Then one of the elders spoke up and said to me, who are these wearing white robes and where did they come from? I said to him, my Lord, you are the one who knows. He said to me, these are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial song is, Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. The Lord's are the earth in its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Who can ascend to the mountain of the Lord? Who can I stand in his holy place? one whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is vain. 
Lord, this is the people that long to see your face. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from God, his Savior. Such is the race that seeks for him, that seeks the face of the God of Jacob. Lord, this is the people that long to see your face. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope based on him makes himself pure as he is pure. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest, says the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you, and utter every kind of evil against you, falsely, because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. The Feast of All the Saints. Today and tomorrow is a celebration of the whole church. We always talk about the body of Christ the body of Christ and the whole body of Christ has different parts our basic catechism has taught us that the church the body of Christ there's the head and all the others are parts same thing with the church the whole church there's the head Christ and the parts all of us and again in our basic catechism we were taught that there are three groups of this body of Christ the church we call the church and sometimes when we say the church people would associate it with the building today uh, we will look at it from its real essence of what the church is not a building but but people real people the three groups, according to our basic catechism, are the church triumphant, the church militant, and the church suffering. So three, three groups. The church militant, all of us who are living, who are still here, militant because, of, you know, just like in the military, we are, we are still fighting. We are still fighting for that salvation. We are still trying to do our best. We are still in that journey, in that struggle to win the final victory. It's almost like a war. We are in that process of advancing. And so we are called the militant church because we are still struggling. We're still fighting towards that victory. All of us who are still alive, who are still in this world. The other members are 
we call the church suffering tomorrow the commemoration of all the faithful departed they are still part of the church part of the body of Christ but they are still suffering the theology and the doctrine of the Catholic Church, at least in the Catholic Church, because not all Christians believe in it, that those who have died, not in the state of grace, will not immediately go to heaven. And they will have to go through this period of purgation. That's why they are called to be uh, in purgatory. In this process of purgation, they are being purged, they are being cleansed. Other uh, Christians do not understand that. You, would, you know, other Christians say, once we die, it's just either heaven and hell. The Catholic Church says, well, the mercy of God is way beyond that. Because no one is perfect. And so because no one is perfect, no one dies perfectly in the state of grace. There would be some imperfections at some point in our lives. Is God that's so unjust that he would condemn to eternal punishment someone who died telling lies or someone who you know um, at some point became angry because he was a victim of violence for example would that person be condemned to eternal punishment the catholic church says well we believe that God's mercy is way beyond our petty sins. And so people who die, not in the state of grace, but also not in the state of grave sin, are in this kind of transition place. And the church calls that the purgatory. And for those people, the only way for them is up to heaven. And that's why we pray for them. They are part of the church. They are still suffering. But one day, they will attain their reward in heaven. I remember my uh, grandmother would always say, pray for the soul source in purgatory. Pray for them because once one of them, because of your prayer, goes to heaven, then you have someone who will be praying for you. So we pray for them. That will be tomorrow. And of course, the, the other part of this church, this body of Christ, is the saints. We celebrate today. They are the church triumphant because they have finally triumphed. After being militant, after their journey on earth, struggling, fighting towards that victory, and some of them went through the process of purgation in purgatory, finally living a life of triumph in heaven. The saints in heaven. We probably would be asking, why would we celebrate the feast today? Is it something that they would love? Would they be happy that we are gathering here today to give them honor that they are already in heaven? Uh, the answer is, well, yes and no. Yes, they're happy because they are part of us. They are part of the body of Christ. They are part of the church. But no, um, it really doesn't matter whether we thank them or not. Because I think the greatest joy that they ever have is the joy of being in the presence of God. They are already happy in heaven. We are commemorating this day not for them because they do not need us, but for us, for us, for two things. We commemorate this day because we need their prayers. One of the doctrines of the church, in fact, we recite during the creed, is the communion of saints, communion of saints. In other words, I was talking about three groups of churches, you know, uh, here on earth, uh, those in purgatory and those in heaven, we are one body of Christ. And there is a communion. Saints, in other words, all of us, we are called saints. There's a communion. We are one family. And as one family, we do not neglect each other. We need each other. 
we pray for each other in the same way that here on earth, all of us pray for each other. I pray for you, you pray for me. So that's part of the communion of saints. Tomorrow, we pray for the poor souls in purgatory because they cannot pray for themselves. But today, we ask for their prayers in heaven because they can pray for us. We ask for that powerful intercession. And I'm sure all of us has, you know, we say our favorite saints that we pray for. The saints that we always call every time we go through difficult times. We have our favorite saints that we ask for prayers. The Blessed Mother, Saint Joseph, or probably um, your name, your name day. Like, you know, um, I was named after the feast of the day. Uh, all of us, my siblings, we were named after the feast of the day. So our names were taken from the calendar, from the feast. So I was named Fernando because I was born at the feast of Saint Ferdinand. So he is one of my patron saints. I was asked for his prayers. And he is a king. I will never be a king, but you know, uh, probably um, he did so many great things, you know, in spite of his fame and honor and power. So we ask for their prayers. So that's first to ask for their intercession because they are now in the presence of the Father in heaven. Their joy is gazing at the loveliness of God. And so we ask them, please bring our prayers to the throne of God. Second, the saints inspire us. Today is not only about them, it's also about us. How do we get inspired by the lives of saints? That is why it is important that we have, you know, uh, patron saints, to be personal or any other saints, because the saints should give us example of how to live our day-to-day -day lives. If we look at the Blessed Mother, for example, you know, we talk about um, Mary treasuring everything in her heart, always doing the will of the Father, or maybe our patron saint, Saint Joseph, the humility of Saint Joseph, the silence of Saint Joseph, doing everything in silence, in the background, or maybe like Padre Pio or any other saints who, because in spite of their sufferings, they remain humble and faithful to the Lord. Or maybe St. Therese and the child Jesus, whose spirituality was based on the simplicity and humility of life, doing little things for the greater glory of God. These are our examples. These are the saints whom we adore and we would like to follow in our day-to-day -day life. And so the feast today is very important. Again, not for them. They do not need it. The saints do not need it. They're already happy in the presence of God. But it is for us. We need their prayers. We need their intercession. And secondly, we need their example. By following their example, at least we know we kind of a guide map what it means to follow the Lord, to become true and genuine disciple of the Lord. So again, today, we pray for that gift of faith. Uh, following the Lord. The gospel today uh, talks about the Beatitudes. They are challenging, difficult, but not impossible. When we talk about our holiness, God is not demanding from us to do impossible things, but rather doable things. Maybe some of them are difficult. Blessed are the humble. Sometimes it's difficult to be humble, but it's not impossible. Blessed, you know, to be generous. Sometimes it's difficult, but it's not impossible. To be forgiving. Sometimes it is difficult, but it's not impossible. And so the Lord is giving us kind of a program of life today of what it means to be a true and authentic disciple of the Lord. And we are assured, yes, that can be done because there are already saints in heaven who struggle the same way as we do struggle. They make it possible. They made it possible by the grace of God. So may the Lord bless us in our day-to-day -day life, in our day-to-day -day struggles, and may the Lord sanctify our lives every day so that in whatever we do every day, it becomes a real proclamation of the greatness of God.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten that made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For as men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnated in the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified at the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The saints had complete confidence in God's power to meet all their needs. Let us now have the same confidence as we now present the needs before his throne. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. That in union with all the saints, the church on earth may be a faithful bride and servant of our Lord Jesus Christ, bearing faithful witness to his gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That following the example of the saints, the spiritual leaders of the church, may seek God's kingdom above everything else and be inspiring witnesses of a holy life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That relying on the prayers of the saints, we may work for justice for all the poor, the oppressed and the unborn, whose, whose most basic rights are denied. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those in our parish and family members who are ill may enjoy the consolation of the Lord and the presence of their loved ones, especially Anthony Di Giovanni, Kathy Orfino, Lisa Del Campo, Baby Mia Scotts, Ava Salania, David Jelovic, Joe Amarin, Bernie and Alice Henley, Kevin Lepofen, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Vincent Bolt, Bertha Claudio, Mary Falgiano, and John Vassal, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intention of this Mass, Carolyn Mitty, whom we remember at this Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all of us gathered today, for ourselves, for those who ask for prayers, so we promise to pray for. Today we pray uh, for the total repose of the souls of our loved ones who have gone ahead of us, our parents, our grandparents, our siblings, children, grandchildren, our friends who have gone ahead of us. We pray that the Lord will welcome them into the eternal reward in heaven. We pray for our families, for safety and protection of our families, and for all the intentions that we hold dear in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. God of holiness, we thank you for the example of the saints. May their teaching and witness make us always faithful to you in times of prosperity and in times of need. We ask this through Christ, O Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and will they come for us our bread and wine. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, through the divine work of human hands, it will become a spiritual drink. Let us now pray that by sacrifice and yours are made acceptable to God, Almighty Father. May these offerings we bring in honor of all the saints be pleasing to you, O Lord, and grant that as just we believe in the saints to be already assumed of immortality, so may we experience their concern for our salvation, Christ, O Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, and in our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for today, by your gift, we celebrate the festival of your city, the heavenly Jerusalem, our mother, where the great array of our brothers and sisters already gives you eternal praise. Towards her, we eagerly hasten as pilgrim advancing by faith, rejoicing in the glory bestowed upon those exalted members of the church through whom you give us in our frailty both strength and good example. And so we glorify you with the multitude of saints and angels as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, your Son in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, who son of the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the founder of all holiness. May holy therefore these gifts be pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the two fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one with the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullest of charity together with Francis of Pope, John the Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, 
that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we merit to be co-heirs of eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and for the divine teachings, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from the evil and gracefully grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and gracefully grant that peace and unity in accordance with your will will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. <clears throat> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Our spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Our announcements tomorrow, November 2nd, is All Souls Day. We will celebrate our annual All Souls Day Mass for the faithful departed members of our parish who have passed away during this year at the 7 p.m. Mass. All are welcome to attend. Thank you and have a safe and blessed day. Let us pray. As we adore you, God, O Lord, our holy and wonderful in all your saints, we implore your grace so that coming to perfect holiness in the fullness of your love, we may pass from this pilgrim table to the banquet of the heavenly homeland through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And the Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, love, and serve the Lord. Have a beautiful day, Jack.